Okay, now we are at script number four. In the previous script, we learned how to calculate the monthly average for a given region. We can compute what was the monthly average rainfall for the last 30 years. And now the time for our real analysis where we know what was the average rainfall for the last 30 years. We can compute the rainfall for the current year and compare both. So from the presentation, we, uh, we learned how to do this. We know uh, have a, we now have a collection where each image is the average of each month. And we have 12 such images in our collection. The next step we wanna do is we will take the data for the current year and do the same where we'll take this data, compute the monthly sum, and then compute the deviation where we'll uh, say, take this data, subtract the, the same month's average and compute the percentage of that. And that will be the uh, deviation of that. So let's learn how to do that. So this is the previous script we built. And now we have this collection of monthly rainfall where each month has uh, the last 30 years of average minutes. So now we want to compute the, the average for the current year. Remember this one, we did it for 87 to 2016. So now we are in 2017 and we want to compute the deviation of the rainfall for each month compared to the last 30 years average. So first we'll compute the monthly total for 2017. And we'll filter our data. And this one is an easy filter. We'll just say filter for the date where we'll just say filter apply filter that date. We'll do 2017, 0101, 17, 12. So now we have all the 2017 images and then we'll compute the monthly total. And this, we have learned how to do this in the past. So I'll just say monthly totals, we'll map it over months. So we have a list of months, we'll iterate over it for each month. We'll then you know, do a calendar range filter and compute the sum of that. So we'll do a month dot map function. And for each function, we'll get the argument as the current month. So we're actually mapping it over the months here. So months dot map, the function we get from each month as uh, for each iteration. And then we can use this to compute uh, a filter. We'll just say to, we'll uh, actually we'll just, Take our uh, take this filter data, and we'll just say do a calendar range filter, and this will be for the current month. So we'll just do it. So take the current month in the loop, filter it over for that month, and then. We'll just say this would be monthly dot sum. So we compute the monthly sum and we'll just you know return total dot set and we can just say month. And we'll now have the monthly totals. Let's print and see what we get. Okay, so we've got our monthly totals. Uh, let's check, this is the current month's total and we have a list. So we'll just create a list called, we'll create an image collection for current images and we'll name it observed rainfall. And this is gonna be your image collection from images and monthly totals. So now I have two image collections. One is an observed rainfall, which is for 2017 monthly images. And we have the monthly rainfall, which is the average monthly images for last 30 years. And now we can compute the deviation from this two collection. And again, for computing the deviation, we are we want to do monthly deviation. So we like to have to iterate over each month and do that computation. So let's just do that. We'll compute the deviation and that will require us to take the months list and map a function over it. And here, what we want, we can do is we will filter each each of these collections and get the image for that month. 
So we'll first get the long-term mean image. So this is the long-term connection. We'll take this, we'll do a filter. And here we can just apply a regular equals filter because we have a metadata property which we can query for the current month. And the result of this would be just one image for that month. So I can just call dot first and that will be, will give me an image and we can convert it to an e dot image. And now I have the current month's long-term image. And same thing I can do with the current month image. We can just make it observed. And this will be this observed rainfall connection. Now we have two images. We can now compute the, the deviation. which will take the monthly observed image, subtract the long-term mean and divide. With the long-term mean. And just put this in bracket so it's going to subtract first and then do the divide and then the whole thing what we get i can multiply it by 100 so we'll get deviation in percentage and we can return this image and uh, we as usual we'll set a property so we can track which month this image came from and that's it. So we'll just print the deviation and see if we caught everything right. Month observed, not defined. Monthly. And now we have each image for each month, which is the deviation for that month. And now all that is left to do is we can chart it and see how does the deviation look uh, for each month. So let's just do that. We'll just compute a chart and that will be ui.chart.image.series. A similar chart as the previous script where we'll just give it the deviation as the collection and We'll do region as Bangalore. Reducer would be scale 1000. This property would be the month. And you can see this uh, deviation in percentage. Uh, the zero line is where the if the rainfall matched the long-term average, that would be the zero. You can see uh, this 2017 was a record rainfall year. And you can see during, say, August, there was 64% more rain than last third year average. And you can see that in the chart. And then it goes down. And as usual, you can add some, uh, make the chart fancy with some parameters, but we'll stop here. And um, we have done more, almost all of the work to display this uh, uh, deviation image, uh, deviation chart, and that required us to do a whole bunch of computation. But hope you got an understanding of how we can do this complex computation where you're aggregating stuff and doing some computation. So the next stuff, we'll do a seasonal deviation. We did the month by month. Now, many times for the rainfall, we need to compute a seasonal deviation. So let's see how we can do that. So moving, moving on to the next script.